John 6, and I will raise him up on the last day. You all know the song, right? I, I can sing it for you. No, not a good idea. Okay. And, um, okay, so after the last day, time will end. And guess what? We become timeless. Oh, I've always thought of myself as timeless. But, but it's cool. We will be able to experience timelessness. And then we enter eternity, and that's what in the Bible is called the new heavens, and the new earth, eternity. Okay. And, okay, we're going to go on. I don't know what time it is. Seven minutes, six, nine, nine. Now is the time. <laughs> time, isn't it? Okay. But let's go on and take a look at the holy name of Jesus. Okay. Because next week we're going to do the name. Right? We're going to do name. That's the word for next week. And so we're not going to get into that part of it. But we're going to look at the holy name of Jesus the way he's expressed it in the book of Revelation. Chapter 1, verse 8. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega says the Lord God, the one who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Okay. Now hopefully you realize that when he was speaking, he spoke Greek. Well, in the book of Revelation, it's in Greek, right? So we can claim Jesus spoke, I'm sure he knew Greek, he, he was a smart guy. Okay. <laughs> he learned it right after Polish, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure he did German. But, um, in the Greek, there are tenses, unlike the Hebrew. You remember when we looked at I am, who am, there is no tense, past, present, or future. In the Greek, there is. And now, we have to convey in the Greek language, which has tenses, that God is the fullness of time, has all time incorporated into himself. And so that's why Jesus says, the one who is, we've got the present, who was, the past, and who is to come. Right? The Almighty, all powerful. And the, the other thing he says the, is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Right? If you take a look at a, like a, a line, you've got the beginning and the end. I always, I always love it when people tell me to get in line because they never tell you which end. So you can get in the front end, but then you get in trouble. Okay. So Christ is the beginning and the end, and he encompasses all of time. And, and so all of it. He's got all of time within him, okay? So that is his name. I am the Alpha and the Omega. You can't just call him Alpha, right? He's the Alpha and the Omega. That's a cool name, right? Hello, Alpha and Omega, <laughs> right? That's a, a cool name. Um, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Hopefully you see how that is a translation, okay, with tenses in a different language of God's holy name. He is one with God. He is God. Jesus Christ is God. And, and I know the, the mystery of the Trinity is a difficult one to grasp, but here with the name, it's very explicit that he is claiming to be God because he claims God's holy name. And when he claims to be God, he also claims to be the master of all time. <coughs> now, God sanctifies time by entering into it through the incarnation of Jesus. And what are we called to do because of that? We are called to sanctify time as well. We celebrate the fact that God entered time by having a liturgical year. We take the entire year. When is our new year? Don't say January 1st. <laughs> Advent. Advent, right? First Sunday of Advent is our liturgical new year. And we go through the life of Jesus. Advent, we're waiting for the Messiah to be born. Christmas, he's born. We go into the feast of the baptism of the Lord, right? And then he dies on the cross. But guess what? He rises again. And in the last feast day, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the way we recognize him in the book of Revelation, right? And so we have the entire year following the life of Christ. And we get this. This is cool. This is really neat. Through baptism, we become members of the mystical body of Christ. Yeah? So you're a member of his body. I keep hoping I get to be like the belly button. <laughs> Something cool, right? Okay, so we're members of his mystical body, okay? And we live his life together with him. We relive his life with him through the whole year. We unite ourselves to him as he lives his life, right? And so we remember year after year what he did, what he suffered, what he accomplished through his Paschal mystery. 
we share that we are members of his mystical body. So it's appropriate for us to live this life, right? And we do that through the liturgical year, and so we sanctify time. But we also do it, what's the next thing? Through the Mass. Through the Mass, we celebrate the life of Jesus. Okay? When, okay, I know this is going to be trick questions for you all, but, but it's fun, okay? When is Christ incarnate during the Mass? Hopefully you're thinking of the beginning of the Mass. When does he take on human flesh? Well, you know what? I'll stop you there, because we'll just stick with the first part, because that, that way you're right. If you keep talking, you're going to get wrong. Okay. <laughs> when the priest comes, okay? Do you ever notice that Mass never begins with the priest sitting there and saying, Oh, I guess it's time. Okay, I'll stand up now and we'll begin. doesn't work that way. It begins when the priest vests, right? Because what happens is the priest stands in persona Christi, in the person of Christ, right? He puts on Christ. You know how in baptism we, we say it is Christ you have put on? In the same way the priest puts on Christ, okay? He gives Christ, he surrenders, sacrifices his life and body to, the, to Christ, who then uses him spiritually, okay? So the incarnation is when Christ comes into the world through the person of, of, of the priest, okay? We're looking at the, the Mass. He does it with each one of you, too. Christ is incarnate in you again, right? He lives in you, hopefully. If you said yes, right? Okay, we want that. Okay, so incarnate, and then he enters the world. Notice that we're all there at Mass. Priest comes in, enters. Christ has entered the world, right? We, we begin um, with the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, right? We begin the Mass, and, and we hear the cry of, of the infant Christ in his, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, the cries of the Christ child. We go into the glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth because Christ is born, right? He's not crying out for humanity that they need to be saved anymore with the Lord of mercy. We've now moved into the birth of Christ and glorify God. And then we go into the first reading in the Old Testament and we see Christ is there but he's hidden in the Old Testament. We can't recognize him yet, but he's there. He's there in these different people, right? Typology. He's there in Adam. He's there in, in Moses. He's there in Abraham. He's there in all these amazing prophets. Okay? But then we hear he's come in the New Testament. Hey, this I recognize. Hey, this time I know. And when he enters the room, we stand up for the gospel because Christ has entered. Christ is present, right? And we stand because the word, the living word, the eternal word has come into our presence. And then what happens? The word becomes flesh. Right? and dwells among us. And, and so we have that movement. The liturgy of the Word becomes the liturgy of the Eucharist. The Word becomes flesh, dwells among us. And then, with the Holy Holy, we're at Palm Sunday. Uh, and we all yell together, Hosanna, <clears throat> blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We, we're there together on Palm Sunday. Then Holy Thursday, on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread in his sacred hands. And then, when he... When the, the bread and the wine are consecrated separately, right, separately, when you separate the body from the blood, you have death. And so we're at Good Friday with the death of Christ. But right before we receive in Holy Communion, if you notice, there is resurrection because a little tiny piece of the consecrated host is put back into the chalice. Do you remember? And we have consecration. Sorry. Um, we have the commingling, right? We have resurrection. And then we receive the, the resurrected body and blood of Christ in Holy Communion, and we are sent forth into the world like the apostles to all corners of the world, right? Make disciples of all nations. And we are sent out as those disciples. And so we relive the entire life of Christ in the Mass over and over again. And we do it as his mystical body. As his mystical body. It's so beautiful. Mo most churches are built in the form of a cross, right? Cruciform. That's the shape most churches take. Why is that? Why is that? The reason is because we together, as members of the mystical body of Christ, when we come together and we take that shape, 
and we unite ourselves, our sacrifices, with his sacrifice on the cross, then we are there on the cross. We're on the cross together with Christ, united with him, reliving that with him, right? Offering him our sacrifices, uniting ourselves with him so that we can rise again with him. It's an amazing thing. The, the, the physical structure of the church actually helps us offer ourselves as Christ did on the cross. Okay. So, through the Mass, the church recapitulates the life of Jesus. Now, time, we have to understand that time is a real gift. Without time, wait, sorry, when you have time, you can do something now, and then you can do something different now, right? You can do something different. You can change. If you had no time, change would be impossible. Impossible. If you had no time, you could never grow. You could never convert. Okay? Because we have time, we can always change and grow and return to the Lord. That is the gift of time. Okay? You have time so you can change. So change your hearts. Right? That's one of the prayers in, in, in the Psalms, right? Change my heart. Make it like yours. Change my heart. So we can change only because we have time, so that is a tremendous gift from God. Makes sense, right? Okay. Um, who or what we give our time to reveals who or what we love. Right? You can say, I love you so much, I love you, but I, I have no time for you. <laughs> right? I only have time for TV. What do you really love? TV. Right? Wherever you spend your time, that is a, a demonstration to the world. It cannot be denied. That is what you love. Okay? And when I speak of time here, I'm talking about free time, where you choose to spend your time. Right? I'm not talking about the poor person in a hospital on a cast from head to toe. They've got no choice. <laughs> They're kind of bound. Okay, but where you choose to spend your time, with whom you choose to spend your time, that demonstrates who you love. And that's why it's so important when Christ says, could you not spend one hour with me? Right? Could you not watch one hour with me? That's why we have Eucharistic Adoration. Right? That one hour. That's why we have you know, this time, at least one hour out of a Sunday. At least. At least. Right? That's the bare minimum. So much more we can give. Um, and we can only give God the present moment. The now. Now is the acceptable time. You have nothing else to give God in terms of time. You don't have your future to give. You don't have your past to give. You can only give him the present moment. And that's what it means to practice the present, uh, presence of God. Like Brother Lawrence, he's got this beautiful little book, Practicing the Presence of God. That's how we do it. We realize that God is present to us constantly, always. God loves us so much, he's always there, ready to, to um, listen, ready to give blessing, gracing us. Right? And we have the present moment in which to give to him ourselves. He gave himself to us as a total gift. We give ourselves back to him when we spend time with him. Okay. So that is why time is so important. And we're going to close there, okay? Because I have nothing more to say. <laughs> we've run out of time. And we've run out of time. So cool. Oh, it all comes full circle, doesn't it? Let's close with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, God of all time, we thank you for all that you've given us. We thank you for who you are. We ask, Lord, that you continue to invite us into your very life, into your very self. We ask, Lord, that you give us the grace that we accept your invitation, that we say yes to you in every moment of our lives. We offer you ourselves, our lives, our families, our friends, and those most in need of your mercy. And we praise and glorify you, Lord, in the words that Jesus, your Son, has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.